Welcome to the Buy to Let Show, the only programme which gives you all the information you need to know, whether you are thinking about Buy to Let for the first time or are an existing investor and landlord. This is our last show and so far we have talked about how to make Buy to Let successful, ways to finance and cover your investment, what might go wrong, how to stay on the right side of the law and in this programme we are talking about how to plan to exit from Buy to Let something in my experience not everyone considers. Now ideally before you buy any property you should know how you're going to make your money and buy when. When you buy a property to let out there are different ways of making it work for you. These break down into two main returns, capital growth when the property's value increases and income from rent as long as it exceeds your costs. There are lots of ways of making property and buy to let work for you financially so you get the money out from it that you want to. Now here are four ways which landlords can exit from their buy to let. The first exit strategy is to sell your properties. This is a simple way to exit from buy to let. If your properties have increased in value you can sell them and pocket the difference after tax. You can then reinvest the money in financial investments, drawing on the cash as and when you need. Pros of this, you are no longer reliant on tenants to pay their rent, nor have the cost of maintenance of the property. The cons are that you will need to pay capital gains tax on the money that you have earned, but there is relief available. A second exit strategy might be to keep the net rental income. So instead of selling the properties, you could just take the net rental income, especially if you have been able to pay off the mortgages over time. Pros of this are you still retain the main asset, which could continue to increase in value and benefit from increased rental income, while hopefully your costs will stay relatively the same. The cons are that you will still be liable for maintenance costs and your rental income is at risk if it's not covered by insurance if the tenant doesn't pay any rent, for example. A third strategy might be sell some and continue to let others. If you have more than one property, you could sell some of your properties and continue letting others so you're able to reduce your maintenance liability but retain some of the ongoing income. A fourth strategy may well be to leave the properties to your children and family. It may be you don't need the capital, growth or income from the properties but would like to leave your buy to let portfolio to your family. The pros of this are that they are able to continue to benefit from long term capital growth as well as additional income. The cons are that property can attract tax which is higher than other investments and it may well be that there are more tax efficient ways of your family benefiting from your property portfolio. And of course these are just some of the ways in which you can exit from your investment but there are many more. As an investor when you purchase buy to let and are working out how you are going to exit there are three things you must consider. First of all think about your own personal investment objectives. Next think about the amount of money you can afford to invest for the long term and finally Consider how adding property wealth to the rest of your assets and earnings affects the tax that you pay. On the Buy to Let show, we're looking at the vital aspect of what to do when you want to exit from your Buy to Let venture. The advice from experts is that you should be planning for this a long way ahead, even at the point at which you purchase your first Buy to Let. Michael Wright has been advising landlords and property investors for more than 20 years. For the last three years, he's been a director of Rita for Rent, offering tax advice, accounting services and help with returns. And he's got a lot of experience of the important aspects of working out exit strategies. There's various things that you may wish to consider. Um, perhaps the more drastic step, step is that you may want to sell all of your properties. Um, on a positive note, you wouldn't have to deal with tenants, um, have the maintenance costs and that type of thing, but at the same time you would lose your income. At the same time, more importantly, capital gains tax. Um, if you've purchased this property some time ago, uh, the rise in value uh, could make the capital gains tax bill quite expensive. Um, of course, you would have the money left over the tax, but uh, it's, it's something that you have to consider. Um, 
another route therefore leading on from that is you may instead think well perhaps section 24 isn't affecting me too much um, I may have less profit but I still have a profit um, so you may think it's not worth selling the property and having the big hit in capital gains tax and you may think well perhaps uh, I'll see if I can achieve greater capital growth in the future. Planning for your exit strategy can also be a useful way of looking at your portfolio overall and making plans for the future. You may want to have an overall review of your portfolio. You may have some within that portfolio that are performing very well. You may have some that aren't performing as well. You may have some that haven't got very high capital gains tax bills potentially attached to them. So it's worth exploring and sitting down with your accountant and tax advisor and really building a good plan for the future, looking not just over the next year or two, not looking solely at, uh, at wanting to save tax, but looking at your overall strategy. Where do you want to be? And when it comes to looking into the future, some investors could have other factors to consider. You may have children. You may want to pass these properties over to your children in the future. That can benefit them because they may want to retain it. They can benefit from capital growth, um, rental income and expenditure if they then let the property. But of course, um, inheritance tax is a very, very detailed area and you would really need to take good advice about the best way of passing property over to children. But again, it, it goes back to that point that it's looking into the future, looking five, ten years into the future. Where do you want your portfolio to be? Where do you want your income levels to be? Um, not being blinded by tax, um, not letting the tax tail wag the dog, but making the right decisions for the right reasons. There's no doubt planning how to exit buy to let is an important part of your overall strategy. It's vital to get it right and ask the right people for independent advice. Coming up, we'll get more tips from three leading experts in the industry. Here on the buy to let show, we've been talking about how to plan to exit from buy to let. Let's find out more about this now with my guests, Cheryl George from Chase Devere, Christina Dimitrov from Direct Line, and Vanessa Warwick from Property Tribes. Hello. So, um, my first question is to everyone really. How important do you think it is for people to understand how they're going to exit from buy to let? Vanessa, you're the landlord. Coming to you first. It's absolutely imperative to understand how you're going to exit your buy to let investments. You know, you, you, you've got to start with a very clear goal in mind because that will direct you uh, of the strategy that you're going to adopt. Um, and, you know, when you first start out in property, it can be very overwhelming to know which yeah. direction to take. So very important to understand that property is not a, a case of one size fits all. It's very individual to you your personal circumstances, your obviously your finances, um, your attitude to risk, how much time you have to devote to it. So you need to be very, very clear on, uh, on your sort of end goal. And part of that is determining how you're going to exit. And, you know, typically, I know you agree with me, um, Kate, that landlords should be looking at a, a sort of 20 to 25 year kind of Especially horizon. Now, yeah in buy to let. Um, so, you know, it's a it's a long time lot, frame. A lot to, of life changes can happen it, in that indeed. time. Indeed. Yeah. And, you know, you're in a commercial relationship with that property for, for a, a great many number of years, but you've got to understand how you're going to exit at the end. And that will largely be determined on what your goals are, whether you're investing as a legacy model, um, you know, you want to leave inheritance for your children, many, many things to consider. And it's, it's very important to make it very bespoke to you and your circumstances, because it's not a case of one size fits all. OK, and Cheryl, coming to you, you mentioned legacy issues. Um, and of course, people, people don't think, I think, when they buy property, how they hold it legally and mention things like trust, so passing it on to children, they can't really do that without coming to talk to somebody like yourself. Absolutely, and listening to your comments, I couldn't phrase it better oh, um, from a financial planning perspective, because that's exactly what we do. We look at the overall goals. A buy to let is for a long time. It is not a short term 
objectives. What we deal with is long-term objectives. And when you're looking at planning for the long-term, there are so many other aspects that needs to be considered. Tax is a massive one. If you're holding a property for 25 years, there's gonna be massive tax implication on exit. There's massive tax implication throughout managing it. And they can change. Absolutely, and look, looking at how your circumstances can change along the way. I mean, it's an ongoing management. What we do is not just manage at the outset, we manage throughout and we yeah. make sure that you have the right exit strategies so that you're not penalised from a tax perspective or you don't lose out because many people buy and they think, well, I can get out whenever. It's not yeah. liquid. You can't just put it on the market and think someone will buy it straight away. They really need to consider at the outset what is your overall goal? What is your exit strategy? How much tax am I going to have to pay on exit? Is it a benefit? Am I going to be losing out? Because financially, you can really pay a lot of tax on exit if you don't have the right plans in place at the outset. From a legacy perspective, it is massive on in inheritance tax. Have you considered the impact it's going to have on, on, on your children or who you're going to leave that property to? Because when it is such a long term yeah, strategy, course. every single thing needs to be taken into consideration. And that is before you yeah, actually make I, that commitment. You know, 25 years, you're going to get sick. Sadly, you might get divorced. Yeah. And those are all the kind of things that you make sure you, you know happen. Yeah. So how they hold that property, buy that property, the paperwork associated and yeah. how it, they leave it from an inheritance. That's your job to kind of do Absolutely. for them, isn't it? Okay. And that's where I think we come in and that's where a lot of people, and we see a lot of buy-to-let um, landlords um, at the other end usually, off the scale <laughs> once they've invested in lots of properties and we're trying to fix it and trying to put plans in place to help them to manage that from a tax efficient perspective. And, and, and if it was done at the outset and throughout, because we see all our clients on an annual basis, yeah. if that is done regularly, we have so many strategies in place along the way that we can help them to mitigate those. Make it nice and smooth. Absolutely. And Christina, your yeah. thoughts? I mean, for me, it's a bit more of a top level view because I'm not so, you know, focused on such a specialist in taxation. But what I think is quite important is that you define your objectives and then you need to have a think about, OK, when have I actually met my objectives and it's now a favourable time and are there good market conditions for me to exit the market? So, for example, if your objective has been to, you know, maximize capital growth and then move on possibly to a new property, to a bigger play, to a new area, then you might have to have a look at when's the best time to sell your property in the market. And on the other hand, are there any new areas where new developments have been coming up where you can potentially jump on really quickly? On the other hand, if you are the type of person who just wants a regular income from this, for example, for pension, maybe capital growth or maximizing your capital growth isn't the key thing but other events might trigger it for example a change in taxation might urge you to exit or a question of inheritance and choosing the right model so maybe timing might not be just the one thing and that's a few things that you need to consider before actually just exiting the market or you need to think of in advance even before even making the investment you need to think of a potential yeah. exit yeah, understand that one. Um, and how early, I guess, perhaps some short answers to this, but when, when should you start, Vanessa? Well, again, um, I, I say, you know, when you're planning to get into before your... Before you're buying, you know, effectively. Before do you're we buying, all... yeah. Yeah, yeah you I need, agree with that. Before you're buying. You really need to consider that um, before you even get going because it will determine so many different... Uh, things about how you invest the in The type property. of tenant and then the type of property and, mm. yeah, and the paperwork, as <laughs> yeah, we always say. And, you know, and I will stress, you cannot discount other types of investments. And this is where, this is one element of your investment strategy. By discounting everything else, this is where you've got um, tax implications. Yeah. And we can help you to mitigate that by looking at the broader picture. Yeah, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I think basically on that... What if, Cheryl, if I come and talk to you, what do I need to bring with me? Because I kind of feel partly like, oh, I don't want to go because I've got to get all my paperwork and it's kind of in my drawer and it's that high and that's going to take me a while. What sort of things do I need to bring with me to speak to you to, to help me with my financial planning? The great thing about the first meeting is just yourself. Oh, is that all? <laughs> just yourself. I mean, what we always ask you is bring with you um, just notes about your assets and liabilities. So we need to know what sort of assets you've got, what sort of loans you've got. So it might be my got. house or Absolutely. loans. Absolutely. So of information on all the things you own and all the money you've got in the world. 
Um, so your assets and liabilities and just information about your goals, because we need to understand what your long term goals is, what your short term goals is, what your current circumstances are. So most of the information we need is just discussing all of the elements. Once we understand everything, then we can build on what you can bring after. Yeah. And I, I think we've mentioned goals quite a lot. And the one thing when I'm doing clinics with landlords is I say, well, they'll come to me with a deal. I go, hey, what do you think? And I go, well, I don't know. Well, oh, you know, it, what do you want? And actually, I think that's one area that landlords are can be quite poor at. And that's where you're all really saying, look, you can't do that anymore. This is this is a business. Have your objectives, run mm. it like a business mm. and then make sure you get the right advice. I mean, I go as far as to say when whatever you're doing in, in your buy to let business, always think, is it actually going to take me one step closer? To my yeah, goals because it does keep you on track well, that's a good deal I'll because, buy it <laughs> you know it's very easy to um, kind of scattergun and be dazzled by other strategies and you know we hear about HMOs being flavor of the month and, yeah which is renting know, rooms of course of course uh, and really my advice is always to start off with what I call bread and butter buy to let which is a single occupancy terraced house with very high tenant demand that's mm. going to rent out all day long you know as a landlord we have to adhere to over 140 government statutes and regulations and you know you have to hone your landlord skills so start mm. out with something very safe very low risk and really learn your craft gradually build up from a very solid low risk foundation. We're all on such a learning journey as landlords. It's one of the reasons Never that- Never stops. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and it's one of the reasons that my husband and I started Property Tribes yeah. because we realized that landlords, in order to be successful and profitable and compliant, do need to be educated. And we really wanted to help that process. And it really is the you know, successful, educated landlord that will be the success story. Um, you know, the uneducated landlord is, is going to fall foul of lots of different pitfalls. So landlords really do have to, you know, think uh, of it as a business. You are a service provider. You're providing a service to your tenant. You have to be compliant. I actually call my, my, my tenants my clients. I prefer that. Mm. Um, so, you know, many people get into buy to let thinking you just buy the property and then you watch the rent come in every <laughs> month. It, it, you know, a tenant, like you know, that. it doesn't work like that. Okay. You know, tenants are people, aren't they? And yeah. you have to address their issues. So certainly my advice is to start off, uh, you know, with a low risk uh, investment and learn your yeah. and hone as your As long craft. as you've got your goals right to start off with. Yeah, that's Absolutely. what we're all saying. Exactly. Okay, that's brilliant. And Thanks. I mean, Lord, the good thing about such a traditional low risk investment is you could go in both directions. You mm -hmm. could upscale, get another Quite. property, get a bit more complex, or you could downscale if you realise ah, it's not for you or you need the money for something Quite. that you didn't expect was going to happen. Quite. It's so important to think about who's going to buy the property mm. when you want to exit. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, you, strategy. You, you don't really want to buy a property that only appeals to another investor because that really limits yeah. your market mm -hmm. uh, when you do want to sell. I always go uh, for properties that I know are going to be appealing to owner occupiers yeah. so that when yeah, I come to sell, I can, you know, I've got access to the whole of the marketplace. OK, that's great. Thanks very much. Well, that's it for now from the Buy to Let show. Thanks to my guests and thanks to you for joining me. Don't forget, you can see all of our programmes online to find out everything you need to know about Buy to Let. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Here on the Buy to Let show, we aim to bring you all the information you need to run a successful Buy to Let. You can find more advice and help by following these links. And you can download our special ebook, which goes with the programme.